we saw that the derivative of sine of x just comes out to be cosine of x. But what if I asked you to calculate what is the 17th derivative of sine of x? When I say the 17th derivative, what do I mean? I mean the derivative of the derivative of the derivative of the derivative, so on and so on and so on, 17 times of sine of x. So 17 derivatives. We're going to take its derivative 17 times. Well, let's think. We know the first derivative is cosine of x. That's taking the derivative once. So if I want to take the second derivative, if I want to find the second derivative of sine of x, that would just be the derivative of my cosine of x. And using a very similar argument to the argument we used for the derivative of sine of x, we can find that the derivative of cosine of x comes out to just be minus sine of x. Okay, so the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, and then the derivative of cosine of x is minus sine of x. Now, if I wanted to find the third derivative of sine of x, that means I'm taking the derivative of the second derivative, which would just be the derivative of your minus sine of x. But whenever you have a negative number or any constant in front of a function, you can pull that out and then calculate the derivative. So this is just the negative of the derivative of sine of x. And the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. So we just get negative cosine of x. Now if I want to find the fourth derivative of sine of x, I can say, well, that's just the derivative of the third derivative. So that's just the derivative of the minus cosine of x. I can pull that minus out and I'll get it's minus the derivative of cosine of x, which is minus the derivative of cosine of x is minus sine of x. So it's minus minus sine of x, minus minus sine of x, which is of course just sine of x. But notice now we're back to where we started. So if I wanted to find the fifth derivative of sine of x, I would say it's just the derivative of the fourth derivative. But the fourth derivative is itself sine of x. So I'm back to the beginning. So if I want to find the fifth derivative, I'm just going back to the derivative of sine of x. The fifth derivative will be the same as the first derivative. And then the sixth derivative is just the derivative of that. And so that's the same as the second derivative. And the seventh derivative is the same as the third derivative. And then the eighth derivative is the same as your fourth derivative, and so on. So how do we get up to 17? Well, it's gonna be quite tedious to keep going this way, but let's think. You can think of 17 as, as 16 plus 1. So 17 is just 16 plus 1. But if I was to take 16 copies of the derivative, well, well each 4, I get back to the beginning. I get back to sine. So the 4th derivative, the 8th derivative, the 12th derivative, the 16th derivative, I'm back at sine of x. So if I want the 17th derivative, well, I go through it 16 times, give me back to the beginning, and then I just need one more time, so it's just like I'm taking the first derivative. So 17 derivatives is equivalent to just doing one derivative. That is, the 17th derivative of sine of x is the same as just a single derivative of sine of x, which comes out to just be cosine of x. You can try this for other numbers too. So say, for example, you want to calculate the 107th derivative of sine of x. So, so d to the, to the 107 
all over dx to 107, 107 derivative of sine of x. We just need to cop we just need to think about, well, how many copies of 4 do we get? The largest copy of 4 right below 107 is 104. 107 is 104 plus 3. And that 104 is a copy of 4. It's, it's 26 times 4. So 104 would have you just go through this fourfold loop 26 times and get you back to sine of x, x after doing 104 derivatives. So then you have to think about, okay, so I still have to three more derivatives. So this is the same as just calculating the third derivative of sine of x. But we can do that, we already did. The third derivative of sine of x comes out to be minus cosine of x. So you just get minus cosine of x.